dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Arlene Dahl in Objections Sustained, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all the grade of the film capital come to join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is beautiful Arlene Dahl, and the title of our comedy romance, Objection Sustained. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here's your announcer. Young men and women, here's your opportunity for an important new career in aviation. Today's best deal for the aviation beginner is in the United States Air Force. No experience is needed, and you earn good pay while you learn. The Air Force will give you the best aviation technical training, opportunity for steady advancement, security and good retirement benefits. If you are 18 to 34, 17 with parents' consent, find out today how you can begin this important new career. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Objection Sustained, starring Arlene Dahl as Sue Cummings. Now to our play. As our scene opens, Nurse Sue Cummings and her friend Peggy are driving to the Littleton Hospital. Sue accepts this daily ride rather reluctantly, for Peggy isn't what you'd call a good driver. Oh, what a beautiful morning, Peggy. Hardly a day for work. Yes, yeah, Sue. We ought to call the hospital and tell them we can't make it. Mm. And then go swimming. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, the duty calls. Oh, yeah. Oh, Peggy. Mm. Peggy, here's oh. where you turn. Oh, oh, sure. Oh. oh, hospital, here we come. Oh! Oh, oh, Peggy, what was that? Oh, Sue, why do you scream so? In this town, you don't scream till you hear the crash. Oh, but, but that man in back, why, he almost hit us. Well, I stuck out my hand. Didn't he see it? Oh, he must have. Thank goodness. Eh. Uh, this is as good as a mile, I always say. Yes, Peggy, that's what you always say. Well, I... Uh-oh, here comes that siren. Probably another accident. Yeah, isn't it terrible how people drive? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Oh, oh, I think that officer would like to talk to you, Peggy. Oh, how nice. Oh, hello there. Well, hello. Do you mind pulling over to the curb, please? Oh, well, what do you suppose he wants? I'm sure he'll think of something, Peggy. Oh, look, he gets off that motorcycle like his girdle is killing him. Oh, Peggy, why you say such things? Good morning, ladies. Beautiful morning, isn't it? Uh, good morning, officer. Officer, please, we're on our way to the hospital. You certainly uh, are, and if you don't mind my saying so, you're taking a shortcut. Oh, we always go this way. Oh, Peggy, please. Officer, I was just explaining where she made her mistake. Won't you let us go this time? I'm sorry, but no. Let me have your license, young lady. Okay, okay, officer. Here. Here here's my license. I hope your girdle is killing huh? you. My what? Oh, forget it. I still don't think I did anything wrong. Oh, no, not much. You only cut right in front of that other car. Why you had to stop on a dime to keep from hitting you? Money, money, money. What people won't do for a measly dime. Peggy, you're making things worse. Uh, officer, uh, we must get to the hospital. Will you hurry, please? Oh, yes, I suppose you do want to get this patient to the hospital as soon as possible. Uh, just sign right here, miss. I am not a patient. I work there. Okay, you work there, but sign this. You can just put an X if you can't sign your name. What? And uh, after this, make your left turns from the right lane of traffic. I did make it from the right lane. I know. That's what's wrong. But you said the right lane. The right lane is the left lane. Do you feel well, officer? Oh, Peggy, please. Young lady, this is not a joking matter. We've got to cut down the number of accidents. Oh, you're right, officer. Why, well, I see accident cases every day at the hospital. Some of them are pretty bad. Sue, whose side are you on anyway? Well, she isn't taking sides, miss. She's just being sensible about this. Now, uh, please sign here. Oh, there. You both happy? Peggy. Thank you. Here's your copy. And remember, drive carefully. 
Goodbye, officer. Well, of all the nerve. There are... Why, Peggy, he was very nice about the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you say he's nice, but I get the ticket. He's only doing his job. He was courteous, gentlemanly, and... And you think he's handsome? Yes. Well, he wasn't bad at that, but... So we... Oh, oh Sue! Sue, would you look at that? He ran right into that car. Well, come on, let's go. We may be hurt. And he said I might have an accident. Peggy, oh, that car turned right in front of him. Man. Oh, he isn't hurt, Sue. He's sitting up. You can never tell. He looks a little dazed. Oh, officer, are you hurt? Oh, you are hurt. No, no, it's just my leg. Hurts a little. You know, I feel a bit foolish. Talking about other people having accidents, and then, then I have one. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Peggy, go phone for the ambulance. I'm sorry, officer. I didn't see you. No, I guess you didn't. Don't you know how to make a left turn, either? Why, well, I, I decided to turn all of a sudden, and there you were. Uh, how unfortunate. But it is fortunate that I didn't break an arm. I'll just write you out a ticket for that bum left turn. He must have landed on his head, Sue. He's still saying that. Peggy, please, go phone for the ambulance, will you? Oh, just a moment, young lady. This accident is a good example of what I was trying to tell you. Now, do you see why I gave you that ticket? Oh, officer, you didn't do this just for me, did you? Now, Olivia, will you please phone for that ambulance? My name isn't Olivia, it's Peggy. To me, you'll always be Olivia. And when we get to the hospital... I'll try to arrange for more shock treatments for you. Good afternoon, Officer Sullivan. How's that leg of yours? Oh, very good, Miss Cummings. Well, I'm, uh, I'm seeing quite a bit of you today. Mm, yes, you are. And you'll be seeing more of me, too. I happen to be the nurse in this ward. Well, just so Olivia isn't my nurse, I'd never get out of here. Oh, you mean Peggy, the telephone operator. I don't think she'll bother you. You know, I'll make it a point not to use the telephone. <laughs> oh, Peggy's all right. By the way, Miss Cummings, um, I want to thank you for your help this morning. Oh, I often assist at accidents. You know, when you stopped us this morning, I had no idea you'd be my patient this afternoon. Well, I hadn't planned on being here, I assure you. Well, the doctor's report doesn't look too bad. You won't be here long. Oh, uh, what does the report say? It says, um, Bob Sullivan, age 26, marital status... Single. That I know, but uh, what about my leg? How long will I be here? Oh, oh, your leg isn't too bad. Three weeks, maybe a month. Oh, I'll be out in two weeks. Oh, you can't be that eager to get back on that motorcycle. No, Miss Cummings, but, uh, well, you see, I'm taking a bar exam in three weeks, and I'd like to be out by then. I can't miss it. A bar exam? Oh, you're going to be a lawyer, Mr. Sullivan. How wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I went to college for. But, well, you see, I still have some studying to do, and I need my books. Oh, we'll arrange to get your books, Mr. Sullivan. Well, if you'll just get me a phone, I'll call my hotel, and they'll be glad to bring them over to me. <laughs> Think you can get by, Olivia? <laughs> oh, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how would you like some help in your studies? You, Miss Cummings? Do you know anything about law? No. No, but my dad does. He's a lawyer, or he was. He's retired now. You've heard of George Cummings? George Cummings? George Cummings is your father? Oh, sure I've heard of him. You say he's retired now? Yes, yes, he's retired to the kitchen. He can't find anything to occupy his mind, so he, he sometimes takes over mother's job as family cook. The family cook? <laughs> How's the food? Well, I won't answer that directly. I'm just glad I work at a hospital where doctors are handy. Oh, it couldn't be that bad. <laughs> Maybe not. You know... I just thought of a brilliant idea. Really? Would you like Dad to help you with your exam? Well, say, I could use some help. You, do you think he'd mind? Ah, uh, you leave that to me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, Mom. Where's Dad? Oh, hello, dear. Your dad? He's in the kitchen, puttering around. Oh, not again. What is it this time? He says it's going to be a lemon sponge cake. Well, just so it isn't to Molly's. Daddy! Uh, yes, dear. What is it? Uh, Dad, uh, how would you like to help a young fellow pass a bar exam? One bar of baking... Uh, one teaspoon of baking powder. I might try, Sue. One cup of sugar. Dad, are you listening? Uh, sure, yeah, sure. Uh, will you help him? Uh, sure, sure. One teaspoon of lemon extract. Uh, uh, who is he? He's a police officer, and, and he's studying to be a lawyer. Lawyer? 
Four eggs separated. Separate four lawyers. Oh, uh, Daddy, I've heard uh, that one before. <laughs> now, will you help him? Oh, yes, Sue, I will. One fourth teaspoon of salt. Uh, hey, will he be over tonight? No, Dad. Uh, I'll see him tomorrow, and I'll tell him then that you'll help him. Well, good. I'll have this cake finished, and you can take him a piece. Uh, he's already in the hospital. Oh, I such impudence. <laughs> now you get out of here. <laughs> All right, Daddy, I'm only joking. You're a dear. Mom! Mom, we're going to have a visitor. A visitor? Is that of such great importance? Well, this visitor is going to stay for a week or two. He's a patient of mine at the hospital. Now, Sue, we're not running a hospital here. Oh, this fellow won't be any trouble at all. He's sweet, he's kind, he's handsome, and he's single. Mm-hmm. What's the matter with him? Oh, he's got a bad leg, just banged up a bit in an accident. What's the matter? Can't he pay a hospital bill? Oh, the city pays for that. He's going to be a lawyer. And Daddy's going to help him with his studies. Well, if your father says it's all right. Oh, thank you, Mom. Oh, I'll fix up the guest room. Gee, I, I wonder what he'll think of my brilliant idea. Well, tomorrow we'll tell. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. I was wondering when my nurse would get here. Say, why all the smiles? I fixed everything, Bob. You'll be out of this hospital by the end of the week. The end of the week? Mm -hmm. Say, my leg isn't that good. No, it isn't. But you, uh, you want to study your law, don't you? Well, I've been studying. The desk man at my hotel brought my books last night. Sue, uh, you wouldn't be wanting to get rid of me, would you? Oh, get rid of you? I want to see more of you. So you're coming to stay at my house to live and to study. Oh, Sue, I couldn't do that. Uh, I thought your dad would be coming here. Oh, Bob, don't argue. Dad has agreed to help you at home. You do want to pass that exam, don't you? Of course, but I'd feel like an intruder and... Well, besides, who'd take care of my leg? Oh, I can take care of your leg when I get home. After all, I am your nurse, and you do as I say. Hmm. <laughs> yes, nurse. <laughs> it's funny. Yesterday, I was giving the orders. Now, I'm on the receiving end. You never can tell, can you? No, Bob, you can't. Especially when Sue Cummings gets a brilliant idea. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, Objection Sustained, starring Arlene Dahl, to bring you an important message from our government. High school graduates, for a job with a real future, get into aviation now. United States Air Force offers you unlimited career opportunities. Under the new Airman Career Program, you'll be trained in the job for which you are best suited and have the best chance for success. You'll get good pay right from the start, free room and board, free clothing and equipment, free medical and dental care, free retirement plan. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Curtain rises on Act Two of Objection Sustained, starring Arlene Dahl as Sue Cummings. Officer Bob Sullivan is now living at the Cummings home, and his leg injury has almost healed. However, Sue hasn't seen much of Bob since he arrived. Mr. Cummings, besides preparing Bob for his bar examinations, has forsaken the kitchen for the great outdoors. In fact, the two are very seldom at home. Sue is beginning to think her brilliant idea was not so good after all. She is just returning from the hospital. Hi, Mom. How's our patient today? Patient? Oh, Bob, he's fine. Mm, well, where are they today? Oh, they're around this morning, but I don't know where they are now. Is Daddy helping huh. Bob with his law, or are they just playing? Oh, they're always talking law, of course. I don't see much of them. You too? Yesterday it was swimming. The day before it was bowling. The day before that it was golf. How does Bob expect his leg to get better? His leg is almost well. I think you're going to lose a patient. Mm. I don't mind losing a patient, but I do mind losing Bob. He hasn't left yet, Sue. Oh, it would be all the same if he wasn't here. I never see him. You see Bob every morning. You're still the only one nursing him. <laughs> every morning. 
Well, he's so sleepy in the morning, he doesn't even know I'm around. Well, speaking of... The... It's about time they got home. Now, Sue, dear, it was your idea that Bob come here. Your dad is helping him, and, and he's still your patient. You've no reason to be angry. Hello, Sue. Look, your patient walks without a limp. Hello, Bob. It's nice to see you again. It's been a long time. Oh, hello, Sue. Hey, your dad's right in form. Took this young whippersnapper four out of five games today. <laughs> I can still toss those horseshoes. Oh, so it's horseshoes today. Yes. I suppose you're going to the gym tomorrow for a little wrestling? How's your leg, Bob? Can't feel a thing. Uh, Sue, how about you and me taking in a movie tonight? Oh, I'd love it. Haven't seen a movie for a month. Well, come on, son. Let's get back to those law books. That exam's tomorrow, remember? Uh, I have news for you, Dad. We've just decided to go to a movie. What's that? No, no, no movie tonight. We'll be burning the midnight oil till the wee small hours. Come, Bob, no time for girls now. But, Dad, you've had Bob all day. Can't I have a few minutes with him now? Remember what I've taught you, son. Go ahead, tell her. I'm sorry, Sue. No, son, tell her. It's out of the question. It's purely irrelevant and immaterial. And uh, what's that got to do with the bar exam? Oh, we're past that. I'm teaching him court procedure now. Court procedure? Well, would it be asking too much if he practiced some court procedure on me? <laughs> Did you hear that, son? She wants to be courted. <laughs> Very funny. Well, Mr. Cummings, a movie tonight would take the tension away, and I could relax for the exam tomorrow. I object. Son, we have work to do, I tell you. I object. Well, um, let's make it tomorrow night. I suppose I should brush up on some of the finer points. Hmm. Yes, Bob. I could use a brush, too. What was that, Sue? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Are they back yet? No, not yet. How are things at the hospital? Mm, fine. That exam must be over by now, don't you think? Yes, it's over. Your dad just called. It's finally over. Maybe now Dad will turn my patient over to me. When will they be home? Oh, he told us not to wait dinner. Uh, they're going to the auto races tonight. The... The auto races? Oh, when is this going to stop? I get Bob out of the hospital to see more of him, and then I don't see him at all. Oh, Mother, how can Daddy do this to me? Those things come easy for your dad, Sue. I know. I know Bob wanted to be with me tonight. I just know it. Uh, perhaps your dad persuaded Bob to go to the races. He's very persuasive, you know. Yes, Yes, I know. That's what made him a great lawyer, dear. Me and my ideas. Oh, I should have known better. Oh, well, there's always tomorrow. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. I'm home again. And with the usual silly question, where are they today? My, you look tired. You didn't answer me. Oh, they'll be home soon. They went to the baseball game uh, to celebrate Bob's success. Bob's success? Did he pass the exam? Oh, your dad is very proud of Bob. He was one of the top five. Isn't that nice, dear? Mm. Yes, Mother. Hooray. Why, Sue, you don't seem excited at all. I said hooray. Well, the Playboys have arrived. They have? Oh, I must get busy. Sue, help me with the table. Dinner's almost ready. In a minute, Mother. First, I have to serve an eviction notice. An eviction notice? Mm -hmm. Sue, what's wrong? Wrong? What has been right? Hello, Sue, darling. Did you hear the good news? I passed the exam. Yes, I heard. Congratulations. Honey, I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. Introducing me to your dad, encouraging me, and helping my leg along. Sue, you've been wonderful. Yes. Yes, just wonderful. Sue, what's the matter? Oh, you're mad about last night. Honey, I wanted to be here, but your dad wanted to go to the races, and I, I couldn't disappoint him. Oh, no. No, you couldn't think of disappointing my dad. Don't feel that way, darling. By the way, how does your leg feel? Oh, fine, fine. Just as good as new. Good. Then my mission has been accomplished. You may go back to your hotel. But, Sue, we have so much to talk about, haven't we? Talk? Well, you've hardly talked to me since we got here. So, I want you to go back to your hotel. Hotel? Bob isn't going to his hotel. We're having too much fun, huh, Bob? I'm glad you came in. I want you to listen to me too, Dad. Oh, just a minute, Sue. What's this all about? Well, she's right, Mr. Cummings. 
I guess I've stayed too long as it is. Oh, but son, we have to get you set up in business. And there's many more things I want to tell you. You just stick around. See what I mean? I've got too much competition. Dad, it was my idea that Bob come here. And it's my idea that he go. And I've just asked him to come back. Son, uh, come out in the kitchen. We'll uh, whip up a pie or something. Well, Mr. Cummings, will you excuse us? Darling, let's go out into the patio. Oh, you're going to tell her about the honeymoon, huh, Bob? Uh, honeymoon? Has it gone that far? Why, I hope you both will be very happy. Oh, don't be angry, darling. We're talking about our honeymoon, just you and me, up in the mountains. Oh, it sounds just lovely. You and Dad have it all planned, huh? We haven't planned anything, Sue. Bob's been talking a lot about you and him. Yes, honey, almost all the time I'm with your dad, I'm talking about you. <sighs> what a beautiful romance I'm having. I've enjoyed every minute of it, Sue. Come on, honey. We'll talk about that honeymoon. Oh, Bob, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Bob's going to be a successful lawyer. What else do you ask? What else do I ask? Well... I met Bob nearly four weeks ago. Yes. And I fell in love with him. Yes, dear. I took care of his leg. Yes. I put heat lamps on it. I, I, yes, dear. I do all I can to make him comfortable. All I can to help him walk sooner. Yes. And then you go out with him. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Is that all you can say? But, Sue, Bob has planned the honeymoon. Yes, the honeymoon. That's what makes me so mad. You talk about a honeymoon. And he hasn't even kissed me. Kiss her, Bob. Sue, darling, lift your head. Like this, Mr. Cummings? Yes, Bob, just like that. That's enough, Bob. Now let's go whip up that pie. Oh. Dad, will you please go out in the kitchen? Maybe Mom wants you. Again, Bob? Darling, I've waited such a long time for this. Oh, me too. Uh, what are you looking at, Dad? Oh, Nothing. Don't you want to bake a cake or something? Say, that's a brilliant idea. I'll bake you a wedding cake. Would you like a four-layer or a five-layer? Oh, will I ever learn to keep my mouth shut? Come on, honey. Let's talk about that honeymoon. <laughs> yes, Bob. Let's... Your dad and I were talking about a spot up in the mountains where there's plenty of snow. Does it sound good to you? Oh, wonderful. Uh, except the part about Dad. Well, I think I'll start packing. Dad, please go away. Let us just have a few... Packing? Packing, Dad? Where are you going? Oh, it just came to me. I thought your mother and I would take a trip while you two are away. Oh, that's fine, Dad. Mom needs a vacation. Yes, thought we'd go up to the mountains, too. Lots of snow. Just right for skiing, huh, Bob? Oh, no, you don't. Bob, tell him no. He's not going on a honeymoon with us. That's right, Mr. Cummings. It's out of the question. It's purely out of the question. It's, it's irrelevant. Yes, it's purely irrelevant and immaterial. Can you imagine? My own daughter doing something like this to me after all I've done for her. Oh, Dad, I've got a brilliant idea. You go ahead and make reservations at the lodge. Now you're talking. Four reservations coming up. Uh, no, Dad, just two reservations. But you just said that... Yes, yes, for you and Mother. Bob and I are spending our honeymoon right here. You and Mom go up to the snow. I object. I absolutely object. I'm sorry, Mr. Cummings. Objections overruled. That's my lawyer. Yes, we're so sorry, Mr. Cummings. And the overruling of that objection is sustained. The curtain falls in the final act of Objection Sustained. Our star, Arlene Dahl, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. High school graduates, there's an important place for you in the U.S. Air Force. You can continue your education, learn a trade, get ahead, and at the same time earn good pay. The United States Air Force has openings for specialists in air transport, aircraft maintenance, research, clerical administration, radio, and many other fields. The Air Force will train you for one of these responsible jobs. Two kinds of training are open to you. You can learn on the job under the world's most skilled experts, or if you qualify, you can go to the finest Air Force technical schools as vacancies exist. You'll find interesting work, job security, good retirement benefits, and opportunity for travel. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest Air Force base or United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again at the microphone, our star and our producer. Eileen, it's good to have you back with us again. Thank you, CP. I always like coming back to your theater. 
It's been almost a year since we did that Western together. Yes, that's right. It was called Deep in the Heart, and we made it last January. You know, you started something, C.P. Now, don't tell me you've been making a string of Westerns. Yes, indeed I have. No. Yes, I just finished two at MGM. The first one is called Ambush, in which I co-star with Robert Taylor and John Hodiak. That should be a good one, and now what's the other one? Well, the other one is called The Outriders, and I made this with Joe McRae. How do you like making westerns? Oh, I love them. <laughs> Wonderful. I see you're doing that musical we talked about last time. Yes, three little words with Fred Astaire, Red Skelton, and Vera Ellen. I'm singing and dancing for the first time on the screen, and I love it. I'm certainly glad you got your wish. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to me that I mentioned to our audience a prediction Hedda Hopper made the first of last year. Miss Hopper has been very kind to me. Oh, you deserve it. Oh, thank you. She said, if you recall, that you were headed for superstardom in 1949. It was a great thrill for me to be included in her predictions. All right, let's take a look at the record. You played the part of Van Johnson's wife in the detective story, Scene of the Crime. What's wrong with that? You're doing fine, C.P. Then you co-starred with Robert Taylor and John Hodiak in Ambush. That's Major League Billing, Arlene. <laughs> You're wonderful. Not to mention the picture with Joel McRae. Yes, The Outriders. 1949 was certainly a fine year for me. I'm so grateful to everyone. Well, Arlene, let me be among the first to wish you everything good for this year. Oh, thank you. But let's talk about you, C.P. What are you doing here next week? Next week, Arlene and ladies and gentlemen, Virginia Gray will star in a romantic and poignant drama titled The Outward Voyage. Oh, I'll be, I'll be glued to my radio. Goodbye, C.P. Thanks. Goodbye, Arlene. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when the brilliant, dramatic actress Virginia Gray joins us to star in a vividly romantic story, The Outward Voyage. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Russ Kelly, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.